And good morning to you. It's Wednesday the 14th of June 2017. A warm welcome along to this morning's United Kingdom talk. Boys and girls, there's been a complaint. We've had a complaint from the great Wendy Young, uh, Barry Manilow expert and correspondent who complains that this morning she got up, made a cup of tea, sat down, all ready to watch last night's United Kingdom talk, but there wasn't one. There was one. Now, I've been fine. I wasn't going to sneeze, but I think it's going to happen now. Sneeze, sneeze. No, no sneezing. No. (sighs) (sighs) Got to watch how you blow your nose. I found an article in the paper this morning. Yes, there was no United Kingdom talk last night. I did say we might have a late night one, but I didn't get around to it because it was a very, very busy day yesterday. So please accept my apologies on behalf of all the staff here at the United Kingdom Television Complex. We're coming, of course, from you uh, to you from Studio A1, the Mirable Studio in Royal Berkshire. Please accept our full apologies for no show last night. Sorry about that, Wendy lovey. I hope I can make up with you in a very, very small way this morning, dear, on this beautiful, beautiful Wednesday morning. That is, of course, unless you're living in West London, because there's this news um, story. Now, it's a funny thing, actually. I laid it, I got up quite late this morning, about 9.15. And um, I lay in bed and I got out. And as I got up, <coughs> I thought to myself, I wonder what, what terrible things happened to this country this morning. You know, because it doesn't seem now to be a morning that goes past without something dire happening. For example, you know, the terrorist attacks, the disastrous general election for everyone, not just for one party, for everyone. Yes, and indeed, once again, I turned on the telly and there is a disaster taking place, boys and girls. Uh, It's a block of flats that's on fire uh, in London at the moment. And uh, the BBC News website reports several people have died uh, and more than 50 people are in hospital after a huge fire engulfed a West London tower block on Tuesday night. And you see, this is the trouble living in tower blocks. You know, now, my nan lived in a tower block. Where we lived in Roehampton, we had tower blocks. Um, now, we lived in a block, at m- m- myself, my sister, uh, my mum and dad. We lived in a block, but it was a, like a long block and only too high. And each each masonette was, was an up and down. So you've got an up and down, then an up and down. Do you see what I mean? So, you know, t- just two stories high. And even there, there was only one stairway right in the middle. And I suppose, you know, if, if, if a fire broke half halfway down and someone on the end, they can't get past, can they? But in a block of flats, surely important to have fire escapes and things like that. Were there no fire escapes? Now, my nan lived in a block of flats, also in Roehampton, one of my nans, Nanny Ryan from Ireland. She was always at church all the time. Um, and there they had a lift and a stairway or one side and another stairwell the other side. Now, I, I foolishly, because I haven't been in many flats, to be honest, I foolishly assumed that every flat, every block of flats is built like this. You know, some lift in the middle, elevator, a lift or elevator in the middle. And a stairwell either side. Well, according to some of these news reports, there's no escape way. There's only one way up and down on these places. It says uh, the building is still on fire. It started last night at uh, just before one o'clock in the morning. That's what it was uh, reported. Grenfell Tower in North Kensington, which is quite a, a it's quite a quite a, a posh area, really. Uh, not all of it, though. Not all of it. I think this is probably. Not not the posh bit, but nevertheless, it doesn't make any difference. 45 engines, fire engines and 200 firefighters uh, went to tackle the blaze. Uh, they reckon uh, quite a few people have died in this. They couldn't get out. I mean, just dreadful way to go, isn't it, really? You know, you're, you're stuck in your flat. You see all this fire and smoke coming up and you can't get out. Eyewitnesses said there were some people still trapped in the building. That's this morning. It contains about 120 flats. There would have been several hundred people in the block when the fire broke out. Um, And uh, it goes on. Don't know what caused the fire yet. 
and that that's about all I know about it at the moment. Families uh, 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 have been asked to, to call a number, you know, if they weren't there to report back uh, so that the police don't look for them, you know, because sometimes um, if they think someone's in there and there isn't and you send a policeman in or, or not, not necessarily a policeman, a fire person in, you're putting them in danger as well. So they need to know that everyone's out. But dreadful to go what's going on. There's, there's already people talking about um, that there were no um, uh, fire. What are those little water things? The little fire um, sprinklers. There were no fire sprinklers. Um no fire alarm, all this sort of stuff. I mean, we don't know yet, but always people, just, they're straight on Facebook saying all these things, but you don't know yet. You know, you want to wait to perhaps uh, <clears throat> someone respected like the BBC to, to report these stories. But um, it's amazing to think uh, how something like that can happen these days, isn't it, really, when you think about it? You know, all these health and safety rules that, that stop so much, so many of us doing things that we love to do now. You know, certainly some of the stuff I did as a, as a Boy Scout wouldn't be allowed to do that anymore. Oh, no, can't do that. Health and safety. And yet a block of flats where people live, spend most of their lives, has gone up in flames. Well, something must have gone wrong there. Uh, someone else was saying that they recently cladded the building with this plastic stuff and that itself wasn't fireproof. I mean, I don't know. You know, for aesthetic purposes... Other people are on there saying, you know, is this council saving money once again? So you don't know what's going on there. So we keep an eye on that story uh, throughout the rest of the day, boys and girls. OK, let's say hello to some of the early birds who are with us on this morning. Good morning, everyone. Uh, Adam the Plumber is there. Good morning, Adam the Plumber. Uh, Gustav says, morning, lovey. Greetings from a battle weary Latimer Road, which is where it's taking place. West 10. Wendy's there this morning. Good morning, Wendy. I hope this makes up for your complaint. Earlier on, dear, a complaint rushed in here to the Mirable studio. Uh, Samantha Howard's with us this morning. Good morning, Samantha. Morning. Duke's with us. Good morning, Duke. Poor old Duke. Dear me. He rang me, um, uh, FaceTimed me, actually, last uh, last night, just as I opened my bed from my... Uh, opened my bed. Uh, just as I opened my eyes from my afternoon siesta. There was a little Duke there. And... He's, he's had a bad day at work, apparently. Oh, yes. Terrible trouble he had in there. He works in a betting shop. I won't say where it is or which one. But uh, he has terrible, awful customers. Druggies, drunks, abuse. Do you get physical abuse as well? People throwing things at him. Ghastly people, dear. Ghastly. That's what you get for being in London, lovey. Come and live with me out here in the country. Yes. You can move in tomorrow. Bring your toothbrush, dear. Morning to Diane. Morning, Diane. Niece Tracy Clifford's with us this morning. Good morning, niece, who has just had the most beautiful baby. It's a few weeks old now, but uh, I meant to put a picture on here to show you all. You can see one on my Facebook. Just scroll down a bit and you'll see a picture of my latest great nephew, James. James. Great nephew. Not Jimmy. Not Jim. James. Big difference. Big difference. Good morning, Tracy. Alan's with us this morning. Antonio, Christina, Keith George is on the line. Um, uh, Kay's there from Majorca. Oh, very nice. I bet you're up there, aren't you, Kay? I mean, it's nice enough here, my darling. Nice enough here. Uh, Keith says, I lived on the 10th floor of a tower block of 14 floors. I, I don't know. Two, oh, there was two... Uh, was there two lifts and one stairwell in that block? Is that what you're saying? The trouble is with two lifts, that's no good, is it? If the electric goes out, it goes out. No lifts, only one other way down. They need two stairwells, these places. But my nan, as I say, they had one, one side and one on the other. Two lots of stairs they had there. Uh, <clears throat> Jerry says, can you put live feeds up on your show? No. No, can't. Uh, Alan says, morning, I just heard the news that the woman dropped her baby. <sighs> that a woman dropped her baby from the ninth floor. A gentleman caught the baby on the ground floor. There's a lot of elderly people. Yeah, did the lady get out, though? You know? Did the la lady get out? They are looking for help if you want to go down there. Uh, Keith says, uh, uh, calling all Londoners. I don't know if uh, they are calling people. But um, they've got no clothes, food, homes, memories. It's all gone. So they've got some drop-off points. Keith, uh, Keith uh, if you look on the um, uh, on the chat thing there, there's all the addresses there if you want to 
if you've got clothes and things to drop off. You just imagine that. Your house going up in smoke. Everything that you've ever had collected. There'd be people in there that have been in there for a year, decades probably. People have been in there for decades. They've got everything in there and suddenly they're told to get out. And in a split second, in a split second, you have lost everything. I'm sure there's people in there who keep cash under the mattress. A lot of people do that now. They don't trust the banks anymore. They keep cash in the house. Well, that's all gone. All gone. I can't think of anything more worse than that. You know, just suddenly everything gone in the, in, in the split second. One minute you have everything, then it's gone. Awful, awful. Adam says, uh, I think the main cause of the scale is the fire, the fact that the outside of the building was clad in and it helped the fire spread. I'm sure it did, yeah. That plastic stuff is not... Once that goes up, dear, thick black smoke, it's awful, like burning tyres. All right, uh, so Kay says it's 35 degrees out there in Majorca, so uh, quite warm over there. Yes, indeed it is. Uh, this, yesterday I got up, what time did I got up? Because I had Slimming World yesterday, boys and girls. Slimming World, oh yeah. So yesterday I got up, uh, run about uh, half past eight it was, and I had a nice breakfast yesterday, baked beans, tin of baked beans, uh, a packet of chopped up, because I cheat with onions, I've started cheating with onions, I'm afraid. Oh, it just hurts your eyes when you cut those little things, don't they? The eyes are streaming away, dear. So I don't do that anymore. I now buy packets of chopped up onions. Oh, they're all right. They're only a pound, for God's sake. So I buy those and um, I had a packet of those. And I had two eggs for breakfast. That was yesterday. Then I jumped on my bike and went uh, and had my hair cut, cycled, cycled into Wokingham, where I've gone back to the other hairdressers now. Um, interestingly enough, remember I stopped going there because he put the price up to £13 at weekends and didn't tell me. Well, I now go there on a Tuesday. I did try another hairdresser's, which I liked, but he's a bit rough with that thing. Bzz, bzz, and it kept hurting my head. Honestly, it kept hurting my head. Bzz, bzz, bzz. The one in Wokingham, where I did stop going to because they put the price up at the weekends, um, there were two people that usually do my hair there. There's a lady from Nepal, and she, she is so nice. And she's so nice. And she, she, she's all right. You know, she does it with, with respect to my, to my head, perhaps you could say. And there was another boy doing it called Brandon, but apparently he's gone now. The boy has gone. You know the one I liked? The 20 year old. <laughs> He's gone now, unfortunately. Now, we don't know why. Because I was sitting there in the hairdresser. I said, Is the boy still here? You know, trying not to make it obvious that I quite liked him. Oh, no, no. The, the boss is sitting just a couple of, couple of ones down. So she says, In a quiet voice, Oh, no, he's not here anymore. Oh, right, OK. I'll leave it. And I thought, I'll, I'll leave it at that. So something must have happened there. I wonder what happened. I'm dying to know. Aren't you? I must... <laughs> I must... <laughs> I must ask the boss what happened. Kay reckons if you cut both ends off the onion, it stops you crying. Oh, I bet, I bet it doesn't. I bet it doesn't. My niece says probably, the boy probably got laid off because you stopped going, so couldn't afford to keep him. <laughs> Do you reckon that's what it is, Trace? <laughs> I must seek him out. Where has he gone? He used to brush past me all the time while he was snipping away at my hair and that thing. Bzz. And again, he was quite gentle. Now, <clears throat> in this place in Wokingham, and to be fair, the one in Bracknell was well that I was going to, but it's too rough. I mean, it, my head was really sore when he was doing that. It was almost like it was digging into it. And I think the clippers, they felt sharp. Now and again, I get, oh, I'll be like that. Well, I don't do that in the other place. But in both places, to be fair, they take their time. You can be in that hairdresser's chair for about 20 minutes. Now, I've been to hairdressers. I mean, in some old bag down the road there. Not, she's not old. Um, someone who lives, uh, the, the, uh, the hairdresser's quite close to me. I could walk there in, in 10 minutes. I've been in there before. Uh, you know, out comes the thing. Bzz, bzz, three minutes in the jet. Thank you, 10 pounds, please. Well, you ain't done it properly, have you? No. Not done properly. The one in Wokenham, the little 
flame thing comes out, psh, psh, burns the ears out, your ears. She does the eyebrows, bzz, 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 like that. All your hair, the knife comes out, scrape, 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 scrape. Uh, shaped up ears, scrape, scrape, scrape. It's all done properly. But where's the boy? Never mind, I'm quite happy going to the lady from Nepal. And we always have a discussion about her family. Uh, she's just been on holiday to Cornwall. She does it, she doesn't fly much at all. It's very expensive. It's very expensive flying now. Have you noticed the price of plane tickets now? Very, very expensive. Um and then uh, went to pay for it, and it's only ten pounds on uh, do, uh, on a Tuesday. Mind you, you can see why there's no one in there. So presumably, what happens? I think that's why they've put the price up at the weekend. They when I've been in on a, on a Friday, and I've had I've had to wait half an hour waiting for someone to be free. Go in on a Tuesday, no one there. So that's what he's tried to do. He's tried to even it out, I guess. Whether it's worked or not, whether it was only me and someone else in there on Tuesday. But that was nice. So I had my hair cut. Then uh, I walked around to Slimmer's World. Parked my bike up, walked in. I had to go back out again because I left my book in my bike because we've got books. Where is it? Here's my book. My Slimmer's World book. You see? It's all there. They give you all this business. Uh, £4.95 a week, I think it is. And I went for the weigh-in. So I'm going in there. First thing I do when I go to Slimmer's World, I make myself a cup of tea. Thank you very much. Tea is there. They've got this tea machine. And you make your tea. Well, after you've put the water in and it's boiling water coming out, you, you turn the tab off. Well, this thing sounds like it's about to explode. It's... <laughs> I think this thing's about to explode, dear. So I quickly make my tea and move away from the said machine just in case that happens. Um, and uh, uh, then I go in. I go in there and there's a little queue of people waiting to hand their cards over because they put the card in machine, uh, in a little machine thing. I don't know, it does something to it because I paid for six weeks in advance, which you get a bit cheaper. If you pay 12 weeks in advance, you get 10. So it's worth doing, you see. And it's about £4.95 a week, something like that. Um, uh, let's have a look. Tell me how much weight you've, weight you've lost. Wendy, I'm coming to that, dear. You Do not push me, dear. You're, you're, you're making me go too fast. I shall start tripping up. Don't push me, dear. Don't push me. It's coming. I'm building up to it, building up the excitement. It's a bit like when they do the answers now on quiz shows. And uh, let's find out if he's correct. And then they sit there for five minutes. And then it says you're correct. I'm building up to it, Wendy. <laughs> oh, dear. I'm glad you like my sound effects, though. I really do. So here we go. Here we go. So I'm queuing up. I've put my card in. Then I'm queuing up on the other little bit next to the scales. There's only two people in the queue. And I got to the scales, stood on. Ding! 13 stone 8. Thank you. I think it was 13 stone 8. One moment, please. Yes, it was. I know it was. Was it? Because they write it down in the back of your love food, love food optimising. But I have Adam to thank this. I have Adam to thank for all this going down to Slimming World. Uh, let me just check. My, here we are. Thank you very much. 13. Where is it? 30. Can, can, I don't know if you can see that. That might be a bit blurred out there for you. Oh, you can. Oh, oh, hang on. Is that focusing? There it is. Can you see? There we are. 13 stone 8. Minus two pounds. Thank you very much. Another two pounds off. Oh, yes. But it is falling off the weight, boys and girls. Falling off. I think it probably would have been a little bit more, a little bit more, <clears throat> had I have not sinned very badly on Sunday this week due to a family dinner, which was very, very nice. So there we are. Another two pounds off. Thank you very much. And then we sit there and we talk about who's lost what. And uh, some people, of course, they don't don't all lose weight. Some people gain a little bit now and again. But that's not to be worried about. Because you gain a pound, you can lose it again next week. Don't beat yourself up about it. One thing I've noticed now, and I'm starting to feel the effects. Two things, boys and girls. Two things. And I did mention this the other day. Number one. My swimming shorts, I now have to do up the string around the top. Because otherwise, when you get in the pool, I don't jump in the pool. Oh, no, dear. I go down the stairs. I'm not one of those people that climbs up all the, like Tom Daly 
Although, you know, body-wise, we're very similar. Tom Daly and myself are very, very similar body-wise, obviously. I cannot expose myself on this family-based programme. But if you if you just imagine Tom Daly in your head and those tiny little speedo trunks, that is what I look like when I'm about to get in the pool. But we, one big difference between myself and Tom Daly is he climbs up all those little stairs. Up, 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 up. And then he stands at the top there, looking down, thinking, probably, will I die if I jump off this? Because that's what I'd be thinking. What is all that about? Going up those stairs and jumping off the top. Are you mad? Strange and mysterious people do this sort of thing. No. I quietly go down the steps that lead into the pool and I commence. But if I swim, then my shorts now will fall off my pert little bottom. They will fall off my pert, compact little bottom. So I now have to do the string up. So that's one thing. Number two, this shirt I've got on today, I was completely and totally unable to do this up just two weeks ago. It would not do up around my stomach. Now, as you can see, it's hanging off a bit. Isn't it? I'm as as my mate Ronnie says, I'm now looking like a coat hanger. Not a wireless one, I want to point out, not a wireless coat, not a wire coat hanger, a wooden coat hanger. Because there are no wire coat hangers in that in that in that cupboard. They are awful, dreadful wire coat hangers should be all converted into car stereo wireless aerials for your car stereo radio thing. Two pounds off, thank you very much. And there were other people, some lost more, some not so much, some remained the same, some put a little bit on. But I had to go over to some woman afterwards. Now, she joined last week. You remember, uh, I did tell you last week, uh, uh, a larger lady joined. And she sat in front. And uh, as people made me feel welcome, I said, I, you know, I said, oh, are you new today? Yes, yes. Oh, welcome along. It's, it's very good. It all does work. So they came to her. She has lost, in one week, £11. I kid you not. £11. Of course, the crowd went wild. Yeah! Yeah, a bit like me when, I'm, when I come on the stage to do my karaoke and quiz nights. The crowd go wild. Hey! I have to have security guards now. I have a side of me because people want to touch me all the time. Gustav does a lot of touching. Gustav. Every time I walk past him now... He pinches my bottom. I mean, I think it's sexual harassment. That's what it is. Oh, oh, you touched me. I'm taking you to court for sexual harassment. Oh, get real. That's what happens in the real world. You come out of university, you've been to too many focus groups, darling. That's the problem. Just accept it. Feel lucky that you have been touched. Unfortunately, is the only one that touched me now, so I should be grateful. But I don't know, he's got a knack of touching me. But I, I, it feels like a tickle. And I, I, I said, oh, you, for some reason, when you touch my bum as I walk past, I, 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 I jump. I, it's like a tickle. It's almost as if I don't fancy you, Gustav. Isn't that strange? You know how it is? <clears throat> when someone you fancy touches you and someone you don't fancy touches you, completely different experiences. They really are. My best friend, Ron, as a joke, sometimes touches me and I hate it. I absolutely hate it. Mm. So that lady lost £11. And then it's, it gets even better. It gets even better, right? So we finish going around everyone and what they do, they split the split the two, split the, 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 the Slimmers World people in half and you've got two teams. So that team... And that team, and they're counting up pounds for points. And that team won, or that team, you know, just a little bit of fun there. There's no prize. Well, there is a prize. There is a raffle. <clears throat> there is a raffle every week. And for just one pound, you can have ten raffle tickets. Or, if you're a little bit short of the money, you know, you can have one raffle ticket for ten pence. Or you can have a strip of ten for one pound. So I always, you know, you know, got to join in, haven't you? 
Got to join in, so I handed over my pound at the beginning of the night to the lady that sits in front. Now, what's her name? Can't remember. But she, she's, she's one of those that's lost five stone. Yes, you heard me right, five stone. There are people in Slimmer's world who've lost three, four, five stone. Honestly. And some of them, they bring in their pictures. They're very proud of this. And as you should be, before and after. Before and after. Wonderful. Anyway, so I've got my raffle tickets, and it's raffle time. And guess what? Chris Ridden wins the raffle. Oh, yes. We are the champions. I won the raffle. Now, what does the raffle consist of? Well, it's a basket of things that are something to do with one of the... It's, it's the ingredients for one of the recipes in Slimmer's World. Okay. And uh, in now I got all excited. So that so so the night came, so the day came and went, and it's all finished. She says goodbye, and then we all leave. And I go over, and there's a basket of goodies, 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 goodie, goodie, gum, gum. Do you remember the goodies? Excellent program, excellent program. Anyway, so there's a basket of goodies, and I'm looking at this, and I'm thinking, well. I don't think I'm going to be able to get the basket on my back. It's a beautiful wicker basket. And I says, I says to um, one of the other ladies, Linda was talking to one of the other members. I said, I don't think I can get that basket. Oh, she said, no, you don't take the basket. There's a bag underneath it. Oh, so that's just for display purposes, you see. So I've got my Slimmer's World. I've got a Slimmer's World bag now as well, which I may display on Friday night at the karaoke. And the prize was the ingredients for overnight oats. Here is the recipe. And you get the, what you do, they print off a recipe thing and laminate it. There it is there, you see. And that is it. And in the basket was porridge oats. There was strawberries. There was, there was even, uh, there was the jar. It's like one of those storage jars. Can you see that? It's like a storage jar thing. Uh, the yoghurt wasn't in there, though. I had to go and buy that. What else was in there? Candorel, sugar. It's only little things. Um, porridge oats, strawberries, the jar. And there was a long spoon in there as well. Was this, I think there was like another couple of things in there. I can't remember what now, though. Anyway, that was in there. Uh, so it, it was the ingredients for all this without the porridge oats. And I made this last night. Now, what you do... Layer the so it's porridge oats, natural yogurt, and then blueberries, strawberries, raspberries, whatever fruit you want to put in there. I don't think I'd put bananas in there because they go a bit brown, don't they? I don't like a banana that's a bit too ripe. Do you? It's got a bit soft in it. I like them hard. I'm sorry, I do. I like them hard. Possibly, dare I say, even uh, maybe a little bit underripe, and you know, not green, but just changed from green to yellow. Once it's got starts getting the little brown dots, no, I have to chuck them away. I don't like, although my mate says that's the best time to have bananas. Is that right? I've, I, I, they're a bit too soft for me. I like them hard. Don't you? Do you like them hard or soft? Eh? No, no, no. Um, so you put that in. So you put a bit of, bit of dried oats. Bit of yogurt, some berries. Dried oats, yogurt, berries. And you, and you do that at the top. You only do it two or three times. And then you put the lid on and put it in the fridge overnight. And it looks, it looks nice. Right? And in the morning you get up. Now it says stir it. Well, I didn't stir it, so I've had this this morning. So I open the lid and the yogurt, you see, had, had absorbed or, or the, the porridge had absorbed the yogurt. And I ate it this morning. Oh, it's delicious. Absolutely delicious. Look, sin-free. Sin oh, it says per serving. Well, I'm assuming that is one serving. It is quite substantial. That It does fill you up quite a lot. So that was absolutely delicious. Overnight oats I had for my breakfast this morning. Thank you very much. That was my slim as well yesterday. All right, let's just say hello to a few people. Good morning, Paul Gallagher. Christina says she's off to drop off stuff at a local church in Portsmouth who are taking a van load up to West London. Good girl, good girl. A good excuse to get rid of the three dressing gowns. Have a great day. Yeah, well done, Christina. Good girl, good girl. Um, <laughs> oh, let's just... Uh, uh, Kay says, I want to know if the machine whistles like a kettle on a stove. No, it doesn't, Kay. No, it's... um. 
It just gurgles and pops and makes strange noises like that. It's not really whistling, no. Um, Christina says, let's see your Slimming World stickers. Stickers? I don't have any stickers. Should I have stickers? No, I, th I think, Christina, I think you only get stickers uh, at so many things. I think half a stone you might get something. Some sort of award at half a stone. Which it's possible that I might get that next week. I don't want to say I will. Because then if I don't, I'll be disappointed. But all I've got to lose is a pound and a half to get to the half stone next week. That's in three weeks. Amazing, isn't it? Amazing. Um, <laughs> Tracy, that's my niece on there. Tracy and her husband were at the family do. They came down from Lincolnshire uh, at the weekend. And Benji, Benjamin, who is her husband, lost his wallet. And he has requested now that I drive to the golf course to see if the wallet's somewhere on the floor. You know, like four days later. Which I will, of course, do. Don't worry, Benj. I will do that. I'm not, I'm not convinced it's going to be there, lovey. I think four days, I think probably, although it might not have, probably what might have happened is that someone has found the wallet, taken the money out and chucked my cards away. I think that's a possibility. Although very illegal for you to do. Do you know that's illegal to do that? If you get caught doing that, that's a nick, that is. That's a nick. You find a wallet, you're supposed to hand the whole thing in. But, Benj, you know what people are like. I mean, you've only got to look at your own family. They find these... <laughs> they find these things and they keep the money, dear. But maybe someone nice has handed it into the golf course. Because let's, let's face it, anyone who belongs to that golf course is not going to need a few extra quid, are they? So maybe it's there. Have you rung them up? Have you rung them up? Might be an idea to ring them up. Um, thank you for your congratulations on losing the other the other two pounds there. Kay reckons eleven pounds is amazing. Uh, is amazing that lady lost eleven pounds. That's just fantastic, isn't it? It really is fantastic. Good morning to Callum, who's joining us this morning as well. Morning, Callum. So I cycle back uh, back home through the fields of Wokingham. It's a beautiful cycle there. It's exactly the same route as I take from church. Because funnily enough, the Slimming World, it's held in the Salvation Army Church, which is just 30 seconds bike ride along from uh, our Catholic church, uh, Corpus Christi. So cycle back. Um, I, I, I thought I'd try that Google, you know, Google Maps. They've got um, a little bike one. They, so you can Google Maps. It does the directions, a bit like TomTom Tom and all that, but for free. And it, But as well as car, it's got walking, cycling and another couple of things. So I thought I'd try the cycle route. And funnily enough, it, it showed me almost exactly the same cycle route that I take anyway. Turn left at the next junction. Go straight on and all that business. Yes, indeed. Um... Adam says, my way in tonight. Where were you going then? My way. Oh, way in. What? W-E-I-G-H, Adam. <laughs> I thought you were telling us all that you were going somewhere tonight. W-E-I-H is the correct way to spell way in this circumstance. God knows how anyone learning English is ever able to do so with so many different ways to spell spell names and this, that and the other. I can think of so many different examples of um, it and when and way and all these business. Yeah, way in. Okay. Your way in tonight. Well, let us know, Adam. Should be here tomorrow because I'm off on Thursdays, as you will. And I have Tuesdays and Thursdays. Oh, it's lovely. Two days off a week. So I work. I now work Friday, Saturday, Sunday, Monday, off Tuesday, on Wednesday, off Thursday, Friday, Saturday, Sunday. I love it. I love it. Absolutely love it. Uh, I had lunch. Now, because I'd had such a lovely breakfast, because I had the onions, beans and eggs, I was, still wasn't hungry by one o'clock. Uh, no, what was it? About two o'clock. So I just had lunch. All I had was um, strawberries and chopped up bananas in some uh, fat-free yoghurt. That was my lunch. Um, got some newspapers from the station. Ronnie came round. I went round. No, I went to pick up Ronnie. Did I take the car out? Yeah, went to pick up Ronnie. Uh, got some more newspapers from the station for Katie, um, who's who's doing... She's, <clears throat> I think she's deteriorated in the last two or three days now. She's, she seems now to be messing and not even getting up, if you see what I mean. 
um, she seems to be sitting in her own mess now, which is, uh, I don't know. And, and she spends a lot of time just staring outwards or at a wall. She literally, if I put her in the garden, she might walk, she walk around and around in circles for a while. And then she just sits there and stares at the wall for hours. I mean, hours on end. But um, uh, anyway, so we do the best with her. She's got some normal newspapers. Um, then we went to Waitrose. Went to Waitrose to fill up my my little little bags with goodies. A little troll around there. No Linda. I don't know where Michelle is. We haven't seen her for weeks now. The lovely Michelle, our favourite member of staff, has not been there for weeks. I don't think she's well. Uh, Linda as well wasn't on there. Or Jackie. Where were the, where were the regular... Um, What do you call them? Customer service people yesterday. They weren't there. So I walked in. A couple of the young boys at work. We know them all, dear. We know them all. As I'm walking round, all of a sudden I said, excuse me, excuse I heard, excuse me, excuse me. It was one of the young boys. Now, he seems to like to get involved in things. He's very good, actually. I've seen him run after shop robbers. Because we don't like people who steal from supermarkets. That's the reason we all have to pay what we pay for this stuff. And all supermarkets get their fair share of them, including Waitrose. And I have seen him and the security guard. He's a lovely bloke, he is. He's got dreadlocks. No, he hasn't now. He's cut it off. He's got a short haircut now. And he always comes over and talks about his family to us. He's a lovely bloke as well. I've seen the boy and him running after robbers from the shop. Good. They need to be dragged out into the street and beaten in front of people. Beaten. So that other people... Oh, we better not nick from there. We will get beaten up. That's what's gone wrong in this world, dear. That is what's gone wrong in this world. Now, I'm not saying that you should all immediately go out and buy a gun, but there was a story in the paper only yesterday in the Daily Mail, I remember reading, and it was about... Um, uh, an elderly couple that lived in a caravan, okay, and a 40, I think a 45-year-old man went in there to burgle them, and he was shot dead. The bloke had a gun. The old bloke had a gun, and he was shot dead, the burglar. I'm sorry, I don't have a problem with that. I don't have a problem with that at all. What are you supposed to do? And just imagine yourself, not the age you are now, just imagine yourself, I don't know how old these people were, we're, we're say 70. Just imagine two 70-year-olds in a caravan living there and someone breaks in. How terrified, you know, 25 years younger than they are, how terrified must you be? Anyway, he just happened to have a gun, so he shot them dead. Never had a record, never done anything wrong in his life. And now the police are questioning him. I don't know how far along that's got. I don't have a problem with that. I hope it was like that other bloke, Tony Martin. Do you remember him, the farmer? He kept a gun because he was terrified. People kept breaking into his farm. So he shot the bastards. Dead. Don't know how old they are. Irrelevant. Irrelevant how old the burglars were. They burgled, they tried to steal someone else's property. So he shot one of them dead. Got put in prison. Why? That is his land. But that's the law of this country. No, you get hauled up between for a court and all that business. I don't know how it works, <clears throat> really. I've never been in court for anything bad, really. I, ha I have been in court. I had a, I, when I was 18, I had a, a pirate radio station. That was all. You know, no damage really being called to anyone, but uh, that, that was the experience that was. Uh, and, and a divorce as well. I, I divorced, uh, so I had to go to court for that. But nothing, nothing nasty or anything like that. But I don't know how that works. You know, so say... Say you, you were in that situation. You've shot someone dead who were burgling your property. Do you then go to court? Is it like a jury? <clears throat> but the jury can't decide what happens to you, can he? Or she. The jury can only say, yes, you did it. Or yes, you didn't. I don't know how that works. But anyway, that's, uh, that's another subject there. Um, so burglars, beware. People have guns and things. 
I always thought about um, at the top of the stairs here, putting some sort of glass cabinet there. So that if anyone came up the stairs and tried to burgle me, I just pushed the glass cabinet down on top of them. <laughs> Dear me. Hello, Debbie, who says in America we have self-defense rules in your house. Yeah, as, as everyone should, I think, Debbie. I really do. Although I don't like the whole the whole gun culture in America. I've got to say that. I don't like the gun culture in America. Um, AD says, good day. Good day, AD. Hope, hope you're well, sir. Hope AD is well. Ah, just a moment. Adam the Plumber's on the line. Good morning, Adam. Good morning, Chris. How are you? Morning, sir. How are you today? All right? I'm good, thank you. Congratulations on your £2 loss. Thank you very much. Very pleased with that. I did say three, yes, but two, two is two. It doesn't really matter, you know. I think we should all set no. targets and things. Um, I've set myself a target of three again next week, you know, just to see what exactly. happens. Exactly. I mean, you may find you get a bigger loss uh, next week because obviously you won't have your, uh, your your little sinful Sunday that you had. Sinful Sunday. A sin in the face of God. I should go to confession, mm. really, about those extra sins that I've had. Indeed. Forgive <laughs> me, Father, for, for I have had whatever you had. Bless you know? me, Father, for <laughs> I have sinned. I have had five roast potatoes, treacle sponge pudding with custard, eaten mess and vegetables done in butter. Ah, that's that's the other thing I meant to tell you, Adam. Uh, I was yep. talking, one of the ladies was talking. She said, oh, yes, yeah. But we went to Toby Carvery. She said, did you know the vegetables mm. at Toby Carvery, if you yep. ask, you can have them without the butter? Did you know that? I did not. No, I didn't either. If you want plain vegetables, you just go up. Yep. Could you do us some plain vegetables, please? And they'll do. Well, they probably got them out there already, waiting to replace the ones that are already done, but not with the butter on that. I would imagine. Sure. But I don't. I don't think you could do roast potatoes without the oil, could you? Though. Um, Doesn't work. No. Uh, I think you have to do fry light, maybe. Fry light. Yeah. Oh, I never. Do you know? I didn't think of that. Oh, I bet that's nice. I might try that. I do do the yeah. fry like potato, the chips, you know, or potato wedges, uh -huh. same thing. I do believe, I, I, I'm told that you can actually cook um, uh, roast potatoes in, in boiling water um, in, in the oven with a bit of fry light or something. I believe, I'm not 100% sure. Oh, that might be worth trying then, yeah. I'm not 100% sure on that one. So, yeah, that was... Uh, so that's, that's a good result then, Chris. Good. Happy days. Yeah, and good yeah, luck for your um, way in tonight. That's it. Go to your earlier story about that uh, that dreadful fire in uh, West London. Yes. Um, I believe, it, it, as I said earlier, it's caused by the cladding because they've just had spent multi-million pounds on it. I've been listening, following this because, uh, as you may know, I used to work for councils. Not for that particular council, but I used to work for councils and in tower blocks. Um and uh, obviously that cladding has acted like a, a, um, a, tuck, a torch paper, if you like. Yeah, I've just got, just the, I've just got a news, news flash up now. Six people have died so far. Um, oh, dear. But the figure is likely to rise, it says over there. Yeah, it's not yeah. good, is it? And so, so I believe that's what's caused it. It's literally encased it in a, in a box of flames because obviously it'll have sort of um, insulation of some description in, in that cladding. Um, and they, they say that's been raining down for several hours, that so, cladding, you know, as it burns. How, how, would it have caught but, a, how would it have caught a light? How does something like that well, catch a light, though? That's the thing. Well, as far as I'm aware, this is what happened. This is only hearsay, so nobody takes this as the gospel truth until the investigation have done there. There is two, two theories at the moment. Some people are saying it was a washing machine. Some people were saying it was a fridge freezer that caught fire on the third or fourth floor. Then the flames, the flames obviously lapped out the window and then caught light to the cladding. And of course, oh, within, right. 15, within 15, the reports are saying that within 15 minutes, uh, the whole top uh, 24, I think it is, 25 um, story uh, block was ablaze. Gosh. Uh, it's basically, that flat, so, you know, just for the aesthetics of a building. And then, of course, last night, it was a hot night. People would have had their yeah. windows open, so the fire's come up the outside and gone back in through the windows again to the other floors. Well, yeah, that's it. As soon as it's gone through the, you know, and obviously it's caught the curtains and things like that, and just the building's just it. And then, of course, as it started burning, 
then the gas supply within the building has also started many explosions. I didn't think that um, uh, flats were have flats had gas supplies anymore. Flats do still have gas supplies, yeah, because they have gas central heating and stuff like that. Don't don't the new ones not have gas anymore though? The new ones, I'm well, sure. I, I I'm sure. That block was sorry, sorry gone. I'm sure at some point we had a fire like this at some other period and then after yep. that they said they weren't allowed to have gas in blocks of flats. No, I think that was gas cylinders. That was... Um, oh, was it? The, okay. Um, okay. For the, the heaters. I think you're thinking about Roland Point back in the 70s. It was right. Roland Point in East London. Um, somebody used a gas, um, you know, one of those gas heaters and it leaked. And it collapsed the entire right. corner of the building. Oh, right, OK. Because in caravans, you know, they're yep. all gas bottles. If you ever go in a caravan, mm -hmm. look at the floor. In every single yep. room, there's a little hole, right? Yeah, and they, yeah. and they, they tell you, you know, obviously, don't cut the holes because I think the gas is heavy. And it, if, it, mm -hmm. if it leaks, it sits on the floor. Well, if you've got holes, it just drops straight out again. I think that's right, isn't it? You're, you're a heating Yeah. Yeah, I mean, it's that, and it's also to keep it ventilated for, you know, if you've got a boiler in the actual um, caravan itself, it allows ventilation. Yes. So you, there's less chance of uh, carbon monoxide poisoning. Right. So that, 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 that's what the ventilation is for. That's and thing, anybody who's got vents in their house near a boiler, my yep. advice is never, ever, ever cover them. doesn't matter how cold it is, do not cover those vents. They're there for a reason. Very important. Very important, yeah. Very important. So, yeah, so um, that's, what, that's why I think it's called the fire. But as uh, Keith George says, rightly, they are appealing for clothes, um, you know, and and bits and pieces to help them. You know, I think it was about, I think it's 600 people because um, we've got 24, 24 floors. Oh, no, I think um, it's over, uh, I'm sure I saw oh, it was like something like 1,200 in the block. 1,200 1, yeah, people? So, uh, how many, how many, yeah, that sounds about... Because there'd be families in there as well, won't there? There'd be like two, yeah, three bedroom yeah, flats, were they? They're all uh, families, yeah. They're all families. <coughs> yeah, yeah. See, as I uh, said, if right. Part of the West London area, it's yeah, as, in. as I said right at the beginning of the show, uh, where my nan, my nan lived um, in Roehampton, they had two stairwells, one either side, and a lift shaft yep. in the middle. Um, mm -hmm. And it, it, it worked. The, the stairs out. It wasn't like I mean, because that was like twelve. What was it? How many twelve? It was about twelve floors high. The yep. stairs were not metal stairs on the outside of the building. They were part of the building. So I, I that's suppose right. that's, that's pretty... That, something like that would be pretty safe. But I don't remember any fire systems or anything like that in there either, really. No, I mean, I mean, I, I must admit, going back to my nan's flat um, in Islington, um, that had two staircases, and it also had a fire exit from each, each flat onto the fire escape. Right. So you had one lift, and the main set of stairs for the building. Then you had an internal sort of um, spiral staircase made out of concrete right. um, that went all the way from the top all the way down. And all the flats on that side could access it directly from their flat. I'm with you. Yeah, yeah. So that, that was that one. And there's a, a flat that I work over. Uh, in fact, you know Charlotte, um, Charlotte Despard Court? Uh, Charlotte Despard Avenue in Battersea. Battersea, yeah. Yes, yeah, certainly. Well, I lived, I lived there for a while. That, that, I don't know if you've ever been in those flats, but um, they've actually got an internal staircase from the top floor, because they're, they're one up, one down right. um, flats, and the top floor have actually got an internal staircase that goes either up one floor or down one floor, depending on how the flat is set out. Oh, right, some, yes. of those flats, some of the flats you go it, go go in at the top floor and work your way down to the... So you can go around Work your way it. down to the levels. Yeah, so if something, one, something goes wrong, you go around it, can't you? Yeah. Yeah. So um, I'm not sure, you know, what the problem was with these flats, why they didn't ha only had the one staircase. That does seem a bit uh, a bit crazy. Yes. Well. But, uh, well, we're still, crossed, you know, still, it'll, still, it'll, watch, it'll still watching that news at the moment. So we'll we see what happens, I suppose. Yeah, just mm. uh, <laughs> see how it goes with that, and take it take it from there. Um, so yeah, that was uh, that's what I wanted to pick up on today. And uh, and going back to your final story, you've just been talking about the burglars. Oh, still there, Chris? Yes. All oh, right. Yeah, just talking about the uh, the burglars um, that, that, that broke into that house and the man shot them. What what would you do in a situation like that? 
well, you don't know until it happens, do you? Yeah. You know, oh, yes, pop in and just take all my stuff. Yeah. It's just... You would you? Yeah, but the, it's not that. Those two elderly people would be absolutely terrified that someone had oh, broke... They don't... What do they, what do they know? Has the burglar got a knife? Has he got a gun? What's he about to do to them? Yeah, exactly. You don't I know, know so you I'm lash out, don't you? Yeah. You cannot, you cannot think in a, you cannot think in a quick situation like that uh, uh, rationally. You can't. You just can't do it. No, 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 definitely not. I mean, I've I've been in situations before where I've had to think really fast on my feet. Oh, have you? Um, at work, you know, um, where there's been emergencies at work. Um, I can't go into too much detail, but let's put it like this: there was a young lady at one of the stations that decided to walk down onto the track. Oh. Um, <laughs> Why did uh, they do that? <laughs> Honestly. God, well, the wanted, amount of people that wanted, do that. She wanted to end her life. So right. um, I, I sort of went into emergency mode, you know, immediately got the, uh, the electrification shut down on the track and got the police involved. But right. you, it's, you just have to really quick think. Yeah, um, yeah, yeah. Sort of situation. What would you do in that situation? Do you do? I I've always got a plan in my head for everything. So, um, you know, if somebody was breaking, I've got a you know, what would I do in that situation? You know, have I got something to hand that I could defend myself yes. with? Yes, I have. You know, but obviously being elderly, that you wouldn't expect it, would you? No, no, not at all. But he just, he, but, he, you know, he, he wanted to burgle them. What, what, what people? I mean, people that live in caravans are not necessarily poor. A lot of people choose to live in a caravan. It's a very nice place. I I could quite happily live in a caravan. I think it's a one, yeah. they're wonderful little houses, and it, I think that would be a good um, you know for the homeless situation in the country. Why doesn't the government stick up a load of caravans? It's cheap. It's fairly long term. You know, you can yeah. get you can get fifteen twenty years out of a caravan before they start falling apart. Well, Probably more. Well, actually, actually, one of the councils has just come up with uh, a novel idea. Um, I don't know if you've seen it on the news. It's uh, storage containers. Ah, oh, yes, you know, I have seen that. Yeah, you can convert those to houses. Yeah, with little windows, and, and they're quite yeah. actually spacious. And you would be surprised how spacious they are inside. That's it. Well, they've just done that to um, a, some bit of Greenland in Acton, I think it was, somewhere around there. I can't remember the exact location. Right. But they've put, uh, I think it's 250 box containers on there oh, and made God. them, split them in half. I made them into some into studios, some into one bed, and some into two beds, and some into three beds. Right. And uh, you know, they, therefore, they can house over 150 families. Yes. Instantly, you know, just on temporary accommodation. I'm with you. Um, and they start they start to do that with the homeless now. There's um, a place in Lewisham, uh, opposite near the 286 bar where you used to do the karaoke. Yes, I did. Yeah, yeah. Um, yeah, they they've knocked down the the leisure centre there, and they have built. Um, well, I suppose you'd call it a box park, if you like. A sort of right, yeah, park. yeah, yeah. And they, they temporarily house all the uh, homeless people there until they can get them in, into permanent accommodation. I think that's so, an excellent yeah, so, excellent idea. Excellent idea. Clever use of uh, a storage container, because, I mean, it's funny, those storage containers now. I mean, have you ever seen those uh, box parks that are popping up everywhere? Yes. The, uh, the pop up, Pop-up shops, they call them, don't they? Pop-up shops as well. That's it, yeah. They, you see, um, see those in um, one, I, in East London somewhere, I've seen them. Yeah, there's uh, one at Shoreditch and there's a new one just opened at Croydon. That's and right. I was, actually, I was actually amazed yesterday. I mean, I was yeah. in East Croydon yesterday. Pop-up shops. Uh, doing, <laughs> sorry, go on. Pop-up shops, oh, that's what they're known. Have you been to Shoreditch? Okay. That's a dump, isn't it? Oh, why oh, would I, anyone... I oh, hang on a minute. I, 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 keep to... talking, Adam. There's someone at my front door. It's my posters. Keep talking. Okay, keep so, talking. Uh, yep, yeah, I'll keep. I'll keep the end. I'll keep the troops entertained. So, guys, um, I used to live in um, in uh, East London in Shoreditch, um, and they've just recently put a box park there. In fact, they've regenerated the entire area. Uh, when I used to go there, um, probably as seventeen or eighteen years old, I used to go there to the Brook Lane Market, um, which is in Shoreditch, and uh, I've watched that market slowly disappear over the last sort of 10 or 15 years, and uh, that market slowly disappeared, and it's been now replaced with a box park, um, as Chris was saying, pop-up shop. Now, these are, um, for anybody who doesn't, hasn't seen these before, 
they are 20 foot long uh, shipping containers. And what they do is they cut a window out and they put some doors on the end I'm and here. turn them into little shops. And then they pop, uh, literally <laughs> stack them on top of each other with, uh, with an interconnecting alleyway. So they've got one in Shoreditch and they've got one in Croydon, um, over in East Croydon outside the station, which I'm actually pretty surprised at because they've put one in there with, uh, I think it's got about 100 units in there. Some are food units and some are um, bars. And there's a nightclub in there made out of about... A nightclub? A nightclub yeah. in one of them? God, I've, I've had an idea, Adam. Perhaps yep. I could purchase some of these little old... Um, what are they called again? Container units. Storage. I could Container have studios units, yeah. all over the country in one of those. Anyway, would you like Remote to know what's studios. just come come from my letterbox? Would you like to know, lovey? Well, it's, my yes, new yes. Po- it's my new posters for Sunday night. Oh, yes. Whoa. So I've oh, got yes. to take these into the pub tonight. Designed by my pretty little set. Well, not really designed by me. They're like, um, uh, what do they call it? A template. Here they are. Template. Oh, yes. Here they are. Karaoke Sundays. At the Camden Camden Eye. Look at those. Aren't they good? Can you see? Oh, you can't. Oh, it's a 10 second delay. It'll be 10 seconds before you see them. I'll wait. I'll wait. I'll wait. You'll have to see them later. Yes, I'm quite pleased with how that's worked. Only 14 quid for 10 posters. Very good. It's not bad how much how you do these now. You know, you just send off the picture to them, and uh, and that's it. Wonderful. Oh, very happy with those. Be, the governor would be pleased with those. Excellent, excellent. So yeah, that's what I wanted to phone in about today, Chris. Really, and uh, well, thank you very much, Adam. A slimming world journey, and I shall be weighing in tonight myself. I'm I'm pretty sure I'm going to have a game tonight. Good luck tonight, and um, let us know. How you did tomorrow yep. on our worldwide famous broadcast. <coughs> when you be broadcasting from Studio B927372. Thank you. Goodbye, Adam the Plumber. Goodbye. Bye, Adam. Goodbye. <laughs> Always a pleasure to hear him. You see, he can he can get me out of situations there. Eh? He got me out of a situation where I had to disappear. Wendy likes the posters. Thank you, Wendy. John Aiken says, I used to live two minutes from the block. Oh, that's on fire. 15 years ago in Ladbrook Grove, I should think. I haven't spoken. No, karaoke eye. No, aha. Gustav, I caught you out there. Karaoke eye, right? Here's a clue why it's called that. The Camden eye. Get it? Karaoke eye. Karaoke eye. The Camden eye. Get it? Yes. That's why we're calling it. The governor wanted it to be called karaoke eye. That's the reason for that. Greetings to George Knight, who joins us very, very late today. Hello, George. And uh, John Springgate's there as well. Anyway, I was telling you about Waitrose um, when I went to Waitrose yesterday. Uh, so, um, so one of the boys shouted out, Oi, oi! And I looked around and I thought, surely it's not talking to me like that. And he wasn't. Two boys had from in school uniform had brought their bikes in. Into They were pushing the bikes around the supermarket. Are you serious? And of course, he was, uh, excuse me, excuse me. And they ignored them. So the two boys come running around the back. There's two of them, two young boys in there. They come running around the back of the customer services area in Waitrose and excuse me and grab the boys. You can't bring those in here. What is it that, how can people be so stupid as to think they are actually allowed to bring in bicycles to walk around in a supermarket? What's all that about? I don't understand. Anyway, so that that happened there. I'm walking around and I've got a bit lazy. I get a bit lazy with my cooking and I wanted to buy some garlic. Now, they do these little pots, in, pots of garlic already peeled and they couldn't. I couldn't find them anywhere. So um, Ronnie went and got someone. He said, can you find the garlic? He came. They couldn't find it. And eventually there's like a team of them. (laughs) A team of three of them walking around Waitrose looking for my little pots of garlic, which we couldn't find anywhere. So we assume, I think they've run out. I'm sure they used to be in the chiller cabinet. I'm sure they were in the chiller cabinet. Um, But they weren't there. So we started walking around. And then we went over to the dried dried spices section. By now, there are, as I say, three people now with me. And I, they're walking in front of me at the speed of light. I'm trying to keep up with them with my little trolley. Uh, eventually, we found frozen garlic. Frozen garlic. I didn't know such a thing existed. And next to the frozen garlic, surprise, surprise, frozen chopped up chili. When I say frozen garlic, it's all chopped. It's already done. 
and also frozen jalapeno chilies, which is what I needed because I was going to make my spaghetti. Oh, well, I did. I made my uh, a, a, a rabata sauce yesterday. Homemade arabata sauce. I also add onions and I chop up a pepper in there as well. But jalapeno peppers, you know, because they're a bit dodgy, they are. You've got to cut them and then, you know, put, and don't ever, ever touch your eyes after you've done one, unless you've washed your hands really well. Very dangerous. So I bought um, chopped up in a frozen packet peppers and also basil already chopped up in a packet. Two, two pounds, I think it was two pounds or something like that. So that was Waitrose. Very pleased. New products identified and purchased. So I had two bags of shopping, come to about 55 quid, I think it was altogether. Um, all good stuff, you know, vegetables and all stuff like that. Then we had a cup of tea and uh, I came back here. Uh, and there is more to the story, but I'm going to have to go now because it's time. Time is pressing now. Time is pressing now. So where, uh, where far have we got to there? I'll put a little line under there. I'll come back to that tomorrow. All right. So if you want to hear the rest of the story... Look out for the show at some point tomorrow, probably in the morning tomorrow, OK? Heidi says, did you show my picture? No, I can't do that, unfortunately, Heidi. It has to be ready. I can't, you can't just send me a picture and I show it straight. Well, that's difficult. It's difficult, darling, all right? And um, we've kind of moved on for that, from that story now, which is still developing on the BBC news site, OK? Let's do, uh, we've got a few birthdays to do. Uh, by the way, today is Mike Yarwood's birthday. Now, Mike Yarwood was a fantastic entertainer and impressionist, huge in the 1970s. He was massive. You always look used to look forward to his Christmas special. Anyway, it's Mike Yarwood's birthday today, 76 years old, and he was such a wonderful entertainer. He really was. Happy birthday to Mike Yarwood. Um, today's birthday is then from ordinary people. <laughs> Not super ordinary people. Ross Pat's out. 37 years old tonight. Happy birthday, Ross. Does a lot of internet radio, that sort of thing. Let me just have some of this. <clears throat> Better. Mari Lowe is 60 years old today. Happy birthday, Mari. Regular viewer to the show. Jamie J. Jordan, DJ extraordinaire, is 44 today. Uh, Daniel Pippin Andrews. Hello, Daniel. Happy birthday to you. And Charlotte Taylor lives in Roehampton, where I used to live with uh, her other half, uh, Paul McIlroy. Is, she's 23 years old today. Happy birthday, Charlotte. And Mandy, Mandy Mungru. It's her birthday as well today. Happy birthday to Mandy. Uh, yesterday's birthdays as well, because I wasn't with you yesterday. Well, I hope to be, but it didn't happen, did it? Yesterday's birthday, George De Michael. Happy birthday, George D. Michael. James D. Wattingham, Mark Harrison, Brian Reed's birthday yesterday, Andy Brown. Oh, my God. I met Andy Brown. You would know Andy Brown. I'm going to get you, baby. I'm going to get you. Yes, I am. And it was all very exciting because I met Andy Brown at Kelly Wilde's birthday party uh, a few months ago now. Ah, oh, one of the highlights of my life. Angie, I love you. Happy birthday, Angie Brown. Woody Francis, happy birthday to Woody. Mark Kelly, drag queen known as Kelly Mild. It was her birthday as well yesterday. So here comes the song, boys and girls. It's time to sing happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to you, people. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday. Happy birthday, happy birthday to you. All right, happy birthday, boys and girls. And we'll continue, we'll continue with my story on tomorrow's show. Just to let you know, it's Wednesday night, so I'm hosting Quiz Tonight. <clears throat> That's at the King's Head Theatre Bar. Every Wednesday, Quiz Night at the King's Head Theatre Bar in Upper Street, Islington. It starts at 8.30 and finishes bang on 10.30 or a, just a touch earlier, OK? So join me uh, and the wonderful bar team at the King's Head Theatre Bar every Wednesday tonight, 8.30 to 10.30, for another round of questions. £30 bar tab is the main prize. Second prize is a bottle of wine. All right? Enjoy your th Wednesday. It's a beautiful day out there, and I'll see you again at some time tomorrow. Have a nice day. Cheerio now.